This old steel Rolex was bought in 1970s for 200 bucks. In 2017, it was sold at auction for almost 18 million dollars, making it the most expensive watch in the history. Shortly, this watch was making 1,300 dollars per day for almost 50 years, being worn. How on earth did this happen? Let's start from the beginning. One day in the early 1970s, Mrs. John Woodward went to Tiffany's store in New York to purchase a gift for her husband to celebrate his entry into auto racing. If you like old cinema, you might know this particular store from the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's starring Audrey Hepburn. Joan, like any wife, feared for her husband's safety, especially since 50 years ago car racing was much more dangerous than it is now. Only in the 1960s, six people were killed in the 24-hour Le Mans race. Since a loving wife couldn't get her husband to stay home, she decided to order an ironic <laughs> message on the back of the gift. Drive carefully me, it said. The gift was rather symbolic. Mrs. Woodward didn't want it to go crazy. She spent $200 on it. What was the gift? Miss Woodward went classic. She chose a watch. The Rolex Daytona she went for was one of the basic Rolex models at the time. It was designed for the working class. It was a steel watch with a glass made of plexiglass, which you can also know as a crappy plastic. It was very durable and had a chronograph function. To put it in human terms, it just had stopwatch in it. The watch's movement was not very accurate and it was actually obsolete. The origins dated back to 1938 and it required a manual winding in the era of watches that wound themselves. Nothing luxurious or extraordinary, just a plain watch. In these times, Rolex watches were not associated with the luxury watches. Of course, if we don't count the gold models which were worn by presidents. Rolex tended to create reliable and practical watches which were available basically to everybody. Body. By the way, with the Daytona model comes an interesting story, or rather a failure of a Rolex brand. Let's pay attention to the full name of the watch. Rolex Cosmograph Daytona. What does the word cosmograph mean? According to the Rolex itself, it means that the tachymeter scale is on the bezel. But there is a small problem with it. It's a complete marketing bullshit. Okay, let's consider the era when the name was given. Early 1960s. Cold War. The time of the first space flight. Rolex was hoping to be the first brand to get their watch to get into the space. So they named the watch like that. You got it? Rolex Cosmograph Daytona. So the one which will fly into space. Unfortunately, Rolex failed all the way. The watch that flew first to space was the watch made by the Rolex competitor Omega. Speedmaster, reference number CK2998. It was the first Omega model to reach the space. Astronaut Walter Shearer took the watch into the space for the very first cosmic mission. It was the mission of the Mercury program and it was in 1962. By the time Rolex Cosmograph models were already on the market, they were basically rolling on the jeweler's shelves. Once again, with the the name Cosmograph engraved on the dial. Guys, admit it, it's a pretty funny situation. Okay, so what the Rolex brand decided to do to go out from this silly situation? Simply, they explained to the public that the name was not associated at all with the Cosmos. They generally said that Cosmos is not so cool after all and the watch was created for the guys who race cars. Yes, you had it right. In 1962, when Omega was the first one to fly into space, the name they Daytona was quickly added to the Cosmograph name and they started advertising the watch that is meant to be worn by the racing drivers who participate in famous NASCAR Daytona races. Yeah, this seems completely legit. To become even more credible, four years after it, Rolex became an official brand that timed the Daytona races. You, you get it. You, you see what they did. It all sounded quite plausible as their watch had built-in stopwatch and could be used to measure lap times on the track. Given the patch history of Mrs. Woodward, who seemed to bought the story about the racing drivers and yeah, she bought the watch. Okay, enough about the name. The watch that Mrs. Woodward purchased had another feature. Its dial was called an exotic dial. The special dials were made by Singer and they featured red Daytona text on them. And the Art Deco stylized Arabic numerals. What's important to note is that it's said that only 5% of the produced Daytonas featured that particular exotic dial. But did this dial made 
against a watch special on the date of purchase? Hell no, it simply had a different style. And at the time, the watch was completely unpopular and it was just considered ugly. And its design was just too complicated. At the time, fashionable watches, they were like tiny, petite and had minimalistic looks. And the Daytona was quite an opposite of that. Oh. And as for the stopwatch function, no one didn't give a damn about it. Let's be serious guys, who does need a stopwatch? How many workers or accountants wear a stopwatch while racing a car on a racetrack? I have a Rolex Submariner and it's said that it's waterproof to 300 meters. I have never gone below two. Actually the last situation like this happened like 20 years ago. For the dozen years or so, that model was so unpopular that it was just collecting dust in the jewelry stores and actually it was sometimes given for free to another watch. Nobody wanted it. Over a period of around 10 years, only 15,000 watches were created, including about 2,000 of these with the exotic dials, which were being hated even more. The number might not seem that bad, but it sort of pales with the numbers of watches sold. It is estimated the Rolex itself sells around 1 million watches every year. Okay, so let's sum up. The watch we are talking about was cheap, unloved and had even less loved dial. So what made its value increase 80,000 times? Okay, let's flip the calendar like a dozen years and let's teleport in 1980s. A group of Italian watch dealers realized that models produced in 1960s were quite ahead of their time and they look quite modern. It got to them that they soon become very fashionable and they started buying them up for next to nothing. Last year I was in Dubai at the watch week. I had the pleasure to hear a story from one of these Italian dealers, Mr. Max Bernardini. He told a story that one day he was walking through Milan with 30 of these watches in his backpack. You can imagine the scale. Fashion changes, the design of watches began to change. And in addition to this, watch market itself, it changed drastically because of the invention of quartz watches, which were cheap, they were super accurate and they could run on the battery for several years without winding, without going with them, they just work. The marketing changed for the traditional watches, they started to be promoted not as the accurate things that measure time, but the things which are tough and unlike electronics it can be passed through the generations from father to son etc. Something most personal to own, something that had a soul. Okay, but how to give an object a soul and how can we evaluate the soul itself? The answer is quite simple, for its owner. Guys, take a look at the artwork I've painted. This guy was gifted with the watch by John Woodward and the guy is Paul Newman. In those old days he was not only participating in races and winning them until he was like 81 years old. He was also a very very famous actor. The guy had been acting in blockbusters since 1960s and had Oscars to his credit. He also acted as a director and was considered as one of the most handsome actors of his generation. He was like the Brad Pitt of the 60s, like a super super celebrity. By the way, his wife, she was also a very famous Hollywood actress. She even received an Oscar in 1958. He actually reminds Brad Pitt. Beautiful wife, Oscar winner, super celebrity. What should we want more? Newman's personality as a movie star, auto racing star and the fact that he wore various models of Rolex Daytona until the end of his life in 2007 made that the watch became personified with his person. Mainly it helped very much to make a Rolex Daytona to be a very very iconic model. That despite its failed start began to get more and more desirable through all the years. And what's most significant, Newman didn't warn a watch because somebody paid him to do it. He just liked it. What's a better advertisement than that? Actually, this watch was meaningful to him. It was a part of his history, part of his story, part of his soul. He wore it everywhere, even through the 24 hours of the lemon race. He would swim in it, act in it, work in it, and just generally be cool in it. And his personal watch was was like the father of the whole model success, whole Daytona success. And people began to see it. After the Daytona was rediscovered in 1980s and early 90s, prices continued to grow at a steady rate. What started as $1,500 watch in late 1980s soon became a $10,000 watch in early 1990s before actually reaching the triple digits in early 2000s and finally breaking the $1 million mark. To this day, there are the configuration 
condition, the better the condition, the more expensive is the watch. The numbers continue to rise. With the most expensive Rolex Daytona ever sold, a reference 6263 in yellow gold with lemon colored dial, making 3.7 million dollars. Modern incarnations of the Rolex Daytona are being sold on the secondary market at prices several times higher than those in the Rolex showrooms. It is impossible to come to the Rolex boutique and purchase a Daytona. You have to sign up for the list firstly. And in order to do that, you have to be a good customer of the brand, which means that you have to first spend a lot of money on the watches. And after signing up, you have to wait like 10 years for your watch. Shortly, that guy made a watch just awesome because of the fact he wore it. Okay, but how did it happen that his watch was sold for almost 18 million dollars? Here's an interesting fact. If you would arrange this cash in one dollar bills in a straight line, it would be long as fuck. 2,800 kilometers long. 10 years before his death, Paul Newman gave his very first Rolex Daytona as a gift to his daughter's boyfriend. The boyfriend, after waiting like 20 years, sold the watch on auction in 2017. But he didn't sell a watch. He sold a part of Paul Newman himself. This part of his soul was worth almost 18 million dollars and was priceless to watch history itself. As you can see, it is very worth dating the daughters of actors. If 18 million is a lot for you, see you in this video about the painting which was sold for 10 times more.